ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt Rogers and welcome to your recap for E3 2017. Now we'll start with Xbox, who aren't really known for having the best presentations. Skittles, that's enough, please. <laughs> Announcing the Xbox One X, sporting 4K graphics at 60 frames a second and also improving gaming at 1080p. It launches worldwide on November 7th. They then gave us a taste of Forza 7 boasting this 4K 60 frames gameplay. They also announced a new addition to the Metro series, Metro Exodus, hinting at open world gameplay. And yes, it's that time again, it's another Assassin's Creed game, but this time we're heading to Ancient Egypt and Assassin's Creed Origins. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds was announced for console, then we had State of Decay 2, which is looking more like a remaster than a sequel. Minecraft is getting a 4K update with full multi-platform crossplay, plus Shadow of War where we watch orcs sass talk before ripping each other's heads off. They then showed us a few back-to-back -back trailers including Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Black Desert, The Last Knight, The Artful Escape, Code Vein, Super Lucky's Tale, a sequel for Life is Strange, Cuphead. They then slowed down to show us Sea of Thieves which is an open world pirate game designed for online play. Then Terry Crews screamed at us about Crackdown 3. Then finally Bioware showed us their new game Anthem, a multiplayer open world game complete with exosuits and dinosaur looking beasts. Now moving on to Sony, who fans are a bit salty at for not announcing Bloodborne 2. But let's have a look at what they did bring to the table. They gave us a taste of Uncharted The Lost Legacy coming out in just a couple of months. The beautiful Horizon Zero Dawn will be getting an expansion with the Frozen Wilds. Days Gone is a fresh look at zombie games which even show the player using zombie hordes as a weapon. The 3DS game Monster Hunter will be stepping up to next gen with Monster Hunter World. Then we got Shadow of the Colossus, not a remaster but full remake from the ground up, much like Bungie did with Halo 2. Then Marvel vs Capcom Infinite, obviously interesting seeing these universes collide. Then Call of Duty World War 2, now I'm still not sure whether they plan to do World War 2 with DICE or whether they blatantly copy due to the success of Battlefield 1. Then they moved on to PlayStation VR, starting with Skyrim getting its own VR experience. Followed by a vibrant looking game called Star Child. The Impatient, a psychological horror experience. Then Final Fantasy Monster of the Deep, which is more like a boy band fishing simulator. We got a military SWAT type shooter with Bravo Team, and a cute looking game starring a mouse called Moss. Kratos and his son set off for a new adventure in the new God of War. Then a new game named Detroit Become Human, where you play as an android in a corporate futuristic world and choose your own adventure throughout the game. And finally, one of their crown jewels, the new Spider-Man game, which is a PS4 exclusive. It looks heavily inspired by Rocksteady's Arkham games, especially in the combat, which is definitely not a bad thing. I just hope it lives up to the best Spider-Man game of all time, Spider-Man 2. Now let's move over to EA. Madden 18 is on its way and it's now getting its own story mode. Battlefield 1's getting new night maps and new Russian DLC. FIFA 18 is going to be fueled by Ronaldo. And Need for Speed Payback is giving us some Fast and Furious vibes. Then a new one named A Way Out, which is a cooperative prison escape game. NBA Live 18 is a mix of both streetball and NBA tournament. Then they admitted their wrongs in Battlefront 1 and gave us a bigger taste of Battlefront 2, giving us loads more content this time around, including a story mode based between episodes 6 and 7 and headed to Bethesda now where Doom is getting its own VR installment. Plus Fallout 4 is going to be completely VR compatible. They then officially gave us a taste of Skyrim Switch including an amiibo allowing you to play as Link from Zelda. Then announcing a standalone addition to Dishonored 2 in Death of the Outsider. Then Bethesda announced a sequel to the 2014 survival horror game The Evil Within. Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus had an impressive trailer with what looks like many of the main cast returning. Now it's time for Ubisoft who teamed up with Nintendo to bring us their new shooter Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. The Crew 2 will feature planes, cars and boats not unlike a next gen Diddy Kong Racing. South Park The Fractured Butthole will probably need to be censored for most countries. Then we had Transference with creative director Elijah Wood of Lord of the Rings fame but no details apart from this teaser and that it has something to do with playing with your fears. Skull and Bones is a cross between Sid Meier's Pirates and Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Then an unnecessary performance by BB Rexa announcing Just Dance 2018. They then announced another South Park game for mobile this time in a turn-based strategy called Phone Destroyer. Then we got something different in Starlink Battle for Atlas which will include physical toys that you can customise and play with in-game. Steep will be getting an Olympic skiing expansion. Far Cry 5 will be bringing back animal sidekicks and encouraging multiplayer friends for hire gameplay. 
Then they finish the show with Beyond Good and Evil, sequel to the 2003 open world action game from two console generations ago. Lots of long time fans have been waiting almost 15 years for this. And last but not least, we have Nintendo, who's also not really known for their great presentations. But they gave us a demo of Super Mario Odyssey, which shows a new possessing mechanic where you take control of other characters with your sentient cap. Then Metroid Prime 4. Nothing but a logo, but Metroid fans are just glad Nintendo hasn't forgot about them. Zelda Breath of the Wild's first DLC pack will be released on June 30, followed by a second pack later on. Plus, Kirby and Yoshi are getting their own solo Switch games. They also announced that Rocket League is coming to Switch and it's also going to feature cross-platform play. And they teased us with a small taste of the new Pokemon RPG. That's it for E3 2017, but tell us what you're excited for this year and maybe what you're not so excited for. But thanks so much for hanging out. If you had a good time, then spank that like button. And if you subscribed during this video, then welcome aboard. This is Matt Rogers, signing off.